Dr. Cornell West is among America's most provocative intellectuals, a Princeton professor and lifelong pioneer of working class rights and racial justice. At this year's Left Forum conference in New York City, Dr. West's appearance drew thousands of activists aiming to revitalize the American left. I want to be in solidarity with Martin Luther King Jr. Once a vocal supporter of U.S. President Barack Obama, Dr. West tells RT why his opinion has drastically changed. Dr. West, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with RT. Blessed to be here. Dr. West, you are one of 1,200 speakers from around the world who have come here to New York to take part in the Left Forum. This year's theme is called Towards a Politics of Solidarity. Why do you think an event like this is so important? One is I just want to pay tribute to the visionary figures behind the left form who play such an important role in sustaining it. But we are now experiencing a radical democratic awakening in the American empire, in the United States, deeply affected by what's going on in Northern Africa, deeply affected by what's going on in the Middle East, and more and more now shaped by what is happening in Madison, Wisconsin, and Columbus, Ohio, and other capitals. So that I think we've had so much sleepwalking in the United States, uh, where, of course, uh, Wall Street oligarchs and corporate elites have been not just dominating, but in many ways looting billions and billions of dollars from the public funds. Uh, and based on their financial uh, shadow, the shadow financial system, uh, making billions and billions of dollars as poor and working people are pushed to the margins. And I think more and more working class persons who thought they had a secure existence recognize that their plight is more and more tied to the plight of poor people mm -hmm. and tied to the plight of working poor people. So you, we're experiencing now the early stages of a kind of shift in perception in the United States. Dr. West, you have mentioned several times that Americans are working harder than ever before. They are earning less than ever before. And the economic disparities in this country are deepening and deepening. Absolutely. Um, you call yourself a critical supporter of U.S. President Barack Obama. How would you assess his leadership and particularly President Obama living up to the promises that he made when he became president? Well, I think that uh, he has now aligned himself with forces that promote the abandonment of poor people and the neglect of working people. So I would characterize Obama as a charismatic version of American exceptionalism with a Keynesian neoliberalism at home and a liberal neoconservatism abroad, which is to say he's the friendly face of the American empire abroad. And internally, he's a centrist now leaning toward the right. And he's in the process, actually, of becoming very sadly, a, a pawn of big finance and a, a puppet of big business. And that's a very sad assessment because he's began with such magnificent democratic rhetoric during the campaign. His rhetoric, absolutely. See, but, but when he brought in Geithner and Summers and Holbrook and others on the foreign policy, it was clear he was recycling Clintonites. It was a neoliberal reconstitution and it was the very moment in which we could have undermined the neoliberal consensus both domestically and, and and internationally he decided to reaffirm it and reconstitute it with all due respect dr west americans did know where his campaign contributions were coming from that's true it was clear and transparent and known that goldman sachs and other wall street banks were making very large political donations to Barack Obama. But, but ordinary people gave him a lot of money too. Yes, So you had, small donations. We thought that it was some balancing because yes, he got big money from Goldman Sachs, he got big money from Wall Street oligarchs, but then he got all of this financial and spiritual and moral support from everyday people mm -hmm. and the trade union movement. Mm -hmm. So you would think there would be some counterbalancing mm -hmm. and that's what we have yet to see. 
in the two and a half years. And of course, right now, it's just an, he's preoccupied with re-election. Dr. West, a poll came out uh, just a few weeks ago indicating that the confidence among Americans uh, is at a 35-year low. That brings us to a Carter-era presidency. Um, I mention this because I know that you are planning an event for early April uh, and you're calling on all Americans to take part. And this event, from what I read, is about empowering the people of this country to fight back against uh, the corporate rule, as you call it. Can you talk to me about this event? Well, it's actually led by my dear sister, the very distinguished professor and activist, uh, Francis Fox Pivot. And uh, we will be at Judson Memorial Church, 2 o'clock, Tuesday, April the 5th. It will be in hundreds of schools will be piping in to zero in on the teach-in. Uh, we'll have a dialogue for two hours or so. Then they'll have another hour and a half dialogue to focus on local issues all around the nation. And it is an attempt to reinforce this radical democratic awakening that's taking place in the United States, led very much by our brothers and sisters in Wisconsin of all colors, uh, but also connecting it to critiques of foreign policy, connecting it to critiques of white supremacy, connecting it to critiques of male supremacy, connecting it to critiques of homophobia, connecting it to critiques of anti-Semitism and anti-Arab racism. But most importantly, it would be a critique of American imperial policy and American uh, uh, economic inequality. Do you think the growing consensus among Americans right now is that there needs to be a mobilization among the people to bring about change and that change can't come through the leadership of one man? I think that is a fundamental message, but I mean, unfortunately, that was said in the campaign in 2008. It's never about one elected official. It's really about the people organizing and mobilizing. But at the same time, we have to acknowledge that these, these Wall Street oligarchs and corporate elites tied to not just uh, the financial uh, corporate complex, that we'll be talking about this tonight, but the military industrial complex, tied to the prison industrial complex, tied to the entertainment corporate media complex, makes it very difficult for people to believe that we can make a difference. And that's what we're here at this left forum to let people know we can make a difference. We have in the past, we do now, and we will in the future.